So another method um, uses a special reagent called NBS, which stands for N-bromosuccinamide. And what this gives us is actually something, an allylic bromination. So a lot of times we've been adding bromine to alkanes, um, or we've been adding bromine to alkenes, pi bonds. Um, but what another method, another not useful tool for reactions would be to do an allylic bromination, where we'd be adding uh, bromine to the carbons that are one bond away from the alkene. That's the allylic position. Carbon four and carbon one are allylic carbons. So it'd be nice to be able to do that. So that's what MBS allows us to do. So like similar reactions, or similar, similar radical reactions, the first step is gonna be an initiation. So we have uh, some energy source and this nitrogen bromine bond, which perhaps looks kind of silly or different to you, is broken. That's our initiation step. And so initiation is right there. And that's gonna give us two radicals. and a bromine radical. Now this bromine radical, and this next step is gonna be a propagation, right, where we actually create a new radical. Um, in this case, we have two allylic carbons, as they were labeled, one and four, so one, two, three, four. And we're gonna do a hydrogen abstraction, which we've done a lot of times. So to decide which one we're gonna take, we wanna think about, well, which one's gonna make the most stable radical? And that would be carbon, uh, taking the hydrogen off carbon four because that's gonna give us a tertiary allylic radical, which would be really stable. All right, so bonds there. So the bromine is gonna take that and that radical in this propagation step, right? We're creating a new radical. We actually create um, a tertiary allylic product. So what's that gonna look like? tertiary allylic radical, dot right there. Renumber our carbons, one, two, three, four. And of course we also made HBr. And that's gonna become important in a second. So that's a propagation step. So it actually gets us to something like this. So a really stable tertiary allylic, tertiary one, you know, it's bond to three different carbons, allylic carbon, a radical. So to keep going on this, we're actually, there's something special about this NBS. And what's special about it is, is, is this next step. So what NBS does, is actually gonna create a very small amount of Br2. So how does it do that? Well, we just generated HBr, so everything's normal at this point. And let's say we have some more NBS floating around, right? So this is a reagent, probably at least a one-to-one, -one, maybe more, maybe two equivalents to this for one of this. Let's say this reacts with HBr. So how's that gonna react with HBr? It's gonna react like a base, so it's gonna be a protonation. So we're just gonna protonate the MBS. And this is gonna allow us to actually make Br2. And let's take a look at how this is gonna happen. So we made Br minus in the meantime. So this is gonna work. Is this bromine is actually gonna react with the other bromine. And this nitrogen bromine bond, which isn't that strong in the first place, very, it's pretty reactive, it's gonna break. And we're gonna move those electrons up. So this is more like a kind of a pseudo substitution um, type reaction. So let's see what the final product of this would be. Okay, so after this bromine reacts, so we protonate the NBS, we protonate that with HBr, that gets us to this protonated NBS, where then the Br minus that we generated in this first step can actually react with the bromine, create a new bromine-bromine bond, break the nitrogen-bromine bond. Those two electrons go flow here, right, which are kind of flowing electrons towards that positively charged oxygen, the electron deficient oxygen. Break the nitrogen-bromine bond, make a new pi bond, we break the pi bond here, and we get uh, to this two uh, stable intermediates. Now, this Br2 now is gonna come back in to play with this. So how is that gonna look? So now we're going back to doing some radical chemistry. So we took a kind of break, did some two electron chemistry, and now we're gonna uh, take, go back in and do some radical chemistry. All right, so now we're pulling back down that first propagation step, where the MBS, the initiation, the MBS bond broke made a Br dot and that did a hydrogen abstraction. 
and that made a tertiary allylic radical, right? So tertiary allylic, really stable. And now we're going to have that actually react with the Br2 we just made with the MBS. So the reason why this works is because we make a very small amount. Small amount in situ, which is a fancy way of saying we make a small amount in the reaction mixture, during the reaction. And whenever we make it, this Br2 is going to react with this radical right away. Instead of having the Br2 react with an alkene like we've seen before, where we make bromonium ions. So what's going to happen? It's another propagation step. It's another prop. We know what we're kind of getting to. All right, one, two, three, four. Look back at our first product. I'm going to get that bromine on carbon four. Of course, with radicals, there's no rearrangements. There are resonance structures, but this is the most stable resonance form. And because of the propagation, right, propagation is you always make a new radical at the end. Termination, you bring two radicals together. You could also do a termination step. That would just involve, maybe if you're making this, this is floating around, maybe this finds one of these and that would be a termination step. Um, but that's not necessary to see here. Big takeaways, MBS reacts, makes a bromine, abstracts a hydrogen, makes a radical. Then from that you made HBr, and that HBr reacts with NBS to make Br2, right? Now we're doing two, two electrons at a time. Once you make that Br2, you go back, and that Br2 reacts with that original uh, radical, allylic radical that you made. And that gets you the product, another Br dot.